The entire G20 was only about uh, what to do with Ukraine and the final declaration, can we have it or not. I asked the Indian friends and the Indonesian friends who were cheering the G20 and those who were cheering G20 before Indonesia for all these long years, whether G20 ever reflected in those declarations situation in Iraq, in Libya, in Afghanistan or in Yugoslavia. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov questioned America's holier-than-thou stand on Russian invasion of Ukraine recently at a conference on geopolitics on the sidelines of the G20 meet of foreign ministers. He said that nobody ever, and I quote, gave a damn over the situation in Iraq, Afghanistan and Yugoslavia in previous G20 meets since its inception in 1999. He asked then, why now? Why is G20 bothered about Russian actions? This was a clear challenge to what Russia calls America's or West dominant narrative. Hello and welcome to 360 Degrees. I'm Anjali Istavar. In this episode of 360 Degree, we try and understand why Lavrov brought up Iraq back at the world stage and why it's relevant especially since it will be 20 years since America's invasion of Iraq on 20th March 2003. So 2003 was a year that introduced the term WMDs to the world's vocabulary and the world started thirsting for the blood of the dictator whose end was a televised circus for all to behold. In 2003, the United States led a military invasion of Iraq that would have far-reaching consequences for the region and the world. The invasion was justified on the grounds that Iraq was believed to possess WMDs or weapons of mass destruction and had links to terrorist organizations. However, these justifications would later prove to be based on faulty intelligence thus giving grounds of justification for Lavrov to attack America. The origins of the invasion can be traced back to the aftermath of the September 11th attacks on the United States. The Bush administration, which came to power in 2001, was determined to take a strong stance against terrorism and perceived threats to American security. Iraq, led by Saddam Hussein, at that time was seen as a prime candidate for military action due to its history of aggression and support for terrorism. The case for invading Iraq was based on two main claims. Firstly, that Iraq possessed WMDs or weapons of mass destruction. And secondly, it had ties to Al-Qaeda and other terrorist organizations, according to USA. These claims were vigorously promoted by the Bush administration and its allies despite the fact that there was little solid evidence to support them. In March 2003, the United States launched its invasion of Iraq with the support of a coalition of allies including the United Kingdom, Australia and Poland. The initial phase of the invasion was swift and successful, with US-led forces quickly toppling the Iraqi government and capturing Saddam Hussein. However, the aftermath of the invasion would prove to be much more difficult and controversial. The search for WMDs, which had been the main justification for the invasion, turned up nothing. It was later revealed that much of the intelligence used to justify the invasion had been based on flawed or manipulated sources. Meanwhile, the occupation of Iraq descended into chaos and violence. Insurgent groups launched a campaign of attack against US and coalition forces as well as against Iraqi civilians. The US-led occupation was also criticized for its handling of the reconstruction process, which was plagued by corruption, mismanagement and insufficient resources. The invasion of Iraq had a profound impact on the Middle East and the world as a whole. It sparked a wave of anti-American sentiment in that region and contributed to the rise of extremist groups such as ISIS. It also strained relations between the US and its traditional allies, many of whom were opposed to the invasion from the beginning. 
The invasion of Iraq in 2003 was a controversial and ill-fated military action that failed to achieve its stated objectives and had far-reaching consequences, as we told you in the region. It serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of basing foreign policy decisions on flawed intelligence and unsupported claims. It became a substantial argument tool for the nations that wanted to challenge the supremacy of USA, who wanted to stonewall America's interference into their foreign policy. But America still stands by its decision to bomb a country into oblivion because it thought it had WMDs. This narrative was once again given strength when the head of the Pentagon, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, visited Iraq ahead of the March 20th anniversary of the ground invasion, which ushered in two decades of bloodshed. Since U.S.-led coalition troops ousted Saddam's Sunni Arab-dominated regime, Iraq's Shiite majority has led Iraq under a power-sharing system. Successive governments have forged close ties with Iraq's Shiite-led neighbor Iran. While Iraq maintains relations with Iran's arch foe, the United States, in a very delicate balancing act. Both allies provided extensive support during Iraq's fight back against the Sunni extremists of the Islamic State group who overran swaths of northern and western Iraq in 2014. The jihadists were ousted from the Iraqi territory in 2017 but retained sleeper cells in the desert area and mountain hideouts in both Iraq and in Syria, which is neighboring to Iraq. Iraq announced uh, the end of combat operations by US-led coalition troops at the end of 2021, but some units remain deployed to provide advice and training. Despite its vast oil and gas reserves, Iraq suffers from decades of underinvestment in its infrastructure and public services that have sparked repeated waves of protest. So who benefited from this war? And who will benefit from this current one? Well, at least not the people on both sides of the border. Do tell us what you think about this video in the comment section. And for more news updates, subscribe to India Today.